Hey everyone, Ryan here, hope you're doing well, and today we're going to be discussing one exercise to work on your loped drum beats. So basically what we're doing is we're quantifying what a loped beat is, and breaking it down to subdivisions or numbers, and then working on it slowly, so then when we speed it up, we've got a loped drum beat, and it's nice and even. So here we go. First of all, we've got to say, well, what is a loped drum beat? A loped drum beat is where the subdivisions aren't quite even. Now, in pop music and things like that, a lot of the songs are in 4-4 or 6-8, and these kind of measures, which are quite even measures themselves. So, obviously, we've got a 4-4 rock beat. We've got a 6-8 beat. Shuffle. Now obviously some styles like Brazilian Samba has a lope to it. But today we're going to be discussing a loped groove in the context of a backbeat. So now with the power of technology and able to program things into sequences, it's very easy for us to mess with some parts of the groove. So for example, if we took a basic rock beat, we can start to move the hi-hat, you know, earlier or later, and we're talking like milliseconds or tiny partials so it's going to only very very slightly change the positioning but this can hugely impact the groove or the feeling of the groove so i'm going to give you two ways to start having a go at some loped grooves and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take the rock beat framework so kick and hi-hat hi-hat snare and hi-hat hi-hat as our function and we're going to slightly change the hi-hat so if we change the hi-hat super super late to the last 16th we get a very, very hard shuffle. So it sounds like this. Okay, and if we move it all the way to the first 16th, it sounds like this. Okay, so obviously if we have triplets, we get a shuffle. And if we play dead even eighth notes, we get a rock beat. Okay, so... How do we move that? Because obviously we've got infinite possibilities. Uh, you can split each each hi hat or each note you do into millionth of a millionth of a second and move it. But you know, as humans, there's so many inputs in between there. It's really hard to do. So one simple exercise I like to do is take quintuplets. Okay. So in in between each kick and hi hat and snare and hi hat, we've got five even partials. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. So we're going to put the metronome on, quintuplets, and let's have a crack at just playing the downbeats. Okay, now this might take a bit of getting used to, but slow it really down if you have to. And really count one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. Okay, so once you get comfortable with that, now we're gonna add our second hi hat, remember from the rock beat, on the fourth partial or the fourth quintuplet. So it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. So let's have a go at that. All right, let's try that a little faster. Faster again. Okay, so you can see when we take away the metronome doing all the subdivisions and we just play to the quarter notes, now we're starting to get that loped feeling. So this is great because using quintuplets, five is an odd number. So if we place a hi-hat on one of those notes and then on the fourth note, so we've essentially got three subdivisions for the first hi-hat and then two subdivisions for the next. So then you get that unevenness, which then creates our lopedness. 
So you can do this as well if you want to tighten the gap. You just increase the odd number. So if we go to 7, so if we play the first note worth 4 subdivisions and the second note worth 3 subdivisions, then you get an even tighter lope. So that sounds like this. A little faster. So you see how that lope is a little bit more subtle and because you've only got four and three, it's closer to even eights. If you were to go nine, 11, 13 and beyond, then the gap would be smaller again. So I'm gonna demonstrate some of the higher ones for you now just so you can get an idea. And so on and so forth. So you can mess around with these. So all we're doing is picking an odd number and obviously an odd number won't divide by two. So where the center is, you imagine if you divide it by two, you round one of them up and one of them down. So for example, 15 divided by two is seven and a half. So round that up, one's gonna be eight and round that down, one's gonna be seven. So 15 would sound like this. So you can see how 15 almost sounds dead even, but it's not, there's just tiny weeny bit earlier on one side of the of the beat because obviously you've got the eight subdivisions and the seven subdivisions the seven's going to be a teeny weeny bit smaller or shorter than the eight side so yeah so this is one way you can help find with lope grooves another thing just to throw in a little bonus is if we do a flam so usually we do the flam on the same surface for example the snare but if we do a flam on two different surfaces so for example, we have our left hand on the snare and our right hand on the hi-hat. Our left hand is going to hit slightly earlier than the right hand. And this can also create that loping effect. So if we play a normal rock beat, but we use a flam and slightly make that left hand early, this will also create the loped effect. So now if we add that with our five subdivisions, so a three and a two, we get this. So there's a few useful tools to help get you started with working on your loped beats. So I hope you found this useful and have a mess around with it. You know, add program in some subdivisions or, or some odd, odd numbers and see how you go. And uh, hopefully you find some use for it. So if you enjoyed today's video, please hit like, subscribe, and turn bell notifications on so you don't miss any more drum lessons. So I've created a PDF to just notate what this looks like. So if you'd like to grab that, I'll put a link in the description and you can grab that there for free. If you have any questions, comments, or you'd like me to make a video about any specific topics, chuck them in the comments below and I'll get to each and every one of those. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time for a new drum lesson.